and on the mound, Jim Mudcat Grant. I threw strikes. I threw sinkers for ground balls. I was not the Bob Gibson type of thing. I was not the Tom Seaver type of guy. Uh, I was lucky enough to win 20 games that one year. But I was a journeyman, but I could get the ball over the plate. Jim Grant will be loosening up. Because of his Mississippi heritage, Jim Grant became known as Mudcat. Jimmy, a 21 game winner, better known as Mudcat. He's the biggest winner in the American League this year. In 1954, Grant signed with the Cleveland Indians organization. That year, he became the first African-American pitcher to win 20 games in a minor league season while pitching for Fargo-Moorhead in the Northern League. In 1958, he made his major league debut. Five years later, he was an all-star, and in 1964, Mudcat came to Minnesota. They traded me when Minnesota was in Cleveland. I went in the locker room, and I went to my locker, and nothing was there. Uh, and I said, Where, where's my stuff? What you do with my stuff? They say it's on the other side. But it was a happy time uh, because the uh, Twins were emerging into a, a terrific ball club at that time, and I didn't have to face uh, Harmon Killebrew and Tony Oliva anymore. Killebrew leads the rush of the Twins to congratulate Grant. The following season was one of history. In 1965, Grant won 21 games and helped the Twins reach their first ever World Series. And here is the first pitch of the 65 Series. Mudcat was phenomenal in the Fall Classic. He bested the Dodgers' Don Drysdale in Game 1 and pitched a complete game victory in Game 6, helping himself with a two-run shot at the plate. Jim Grant steps into the box and then rips into the first pitch for a home run. Even if a pitcher hit a single, a double, that was great, but I hit that home run. A lot of people don't know this. I missed second base, but I was in my trot, and I said, I can't go back. And I says, Lord, if you just help me this time, I won't ask. And so when I crossed home plate and they threw the ball to the next hit, I was elated at that time. Mudcat knew how to pitch on the mound. And on the stage, he could hit any pitch. His professional career was a blend of baseball and the blues. I mean, as a blues singer, come on, you can't get no better than Mudcat Grant, you know. And I remember when I first started singing at about nine or 10 years old, my elementary school teacher gave me an album of Johann Strauss. That was the first one. Then she gave me uh, uh, an album of Eddie Arnold. That was the second one. And then she gave me an album of John Lee Hooker. I, I mean, it was so diversified, but it was the blues I heard the most uh, when I was a youngster. So I just got involved in the blues. Throughout his life, music has been just as important as baseball. In the 60s, Mudcat and his kiddies performed on the Johnny Carson Show and played with the likes of Duke Ellington and Count Basie. Back in those days when, when segregation was at its worst, you always saw uh, Count Basie and Duke Ellington, Ella Fitzgerald, everybody at the same places that we had to stay. And they were baseball fans. And they shoved me, man. Bobby Darren, they just shoved me and uh, taught me a lot about music. You know, I enjoy that just as much as I do baseball. And uh, I don't tell everybody this, but I made way more money in music than I did in baseball. <laughs> That's astonishing, considering his baseball career lasted 14 major league seasons. After leaving the Twins in 1967, Grant spent the next four years with four different teams. In 1969, he earned the second win in Montreal Expo history. And in 1970, he recorded 24 saves for Oakland and Pittsburgh. Mudcat Grant has been out of baseball for nearly a half of a century, but he's never left the game. Baseball is even bigger at this time because I use my baseball celebrity to do a lot of things in the community all over this country. The fact that I was in the World Series is even bigger now than it's ever been before.